here. All right, guys, so good morning uh, to everyone in the live training room and to everyone on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash that like button so we can get started. All right, so we've got a couple names today um, that I personally like that I think are going to be really good plays. And let me just kick it off, uh, honestly, with GameStop. We were just talking about GameStop. It's gapping down uh, 100 points. And the number that I'm looking at is is the low that we created about three days ago or five days ago um you can see here it was around like 111 112 dollars i i i'm looking to uh actually play short on gamestop today so if gamestop wants to continue to sell off it's definitely going to be on my radar to play um so here is how i'll play it so if gamestop uh breaks this pre-market low of like 123 124 you can go ahead and short it however uh i'm gonna play stops real tight i'm gonna play stops at 128 so that already tells you that there's a four point uh risk right on gamestop if it breaks that initial short um if gamestop rallies and breaks above uh, my charts are going wacko right now um if gamestop rallies and breaks above 134 then you could potentially maybe get a bounce from short covering. Um, maybe you might rally a little bit before it continues to sell off the rest of the day. So you could possibly play go long, but you'd have to put your stops at 128. So if you go long, you're going to look at probably $6 risk per share. Um, so just be careful because it, it, does, it does have a lot of range and you just want to make sure you don't get caught in, you know, in something, in, in, a, in a trade that, that can hurt you really bad. So for every hundred shares, you know, if you're risking six points, you're, you're talking about a $600 risk. If you're playing options contracts, maybe a little different, um, but just manage your risk accordingly. So GameStop is definitely going to be um, one of my A-list stocks for today. Uh, another stock that I'm going to watch very closely is Facebook. Why? Facebook out of all of the mega cap stocks have been, has been beaten down. Um, yesterday it briefly touched or it, it, it bounced almost right off of the 200 day moving average and it's not rallying and it's not getting bought up as much as you know like Microsoft and all these other mega cap stocks and you have analysts constantly giving this stock price target upgrades I mean you have Wall Street saying that Facebook is like a 300 plus dollar stock and it's trading at 264 10 points above its 200 day moving average so right now it's consolidating, um, you know, in a really tight range in pre-market. So if Facebook breaks above 264.75, I'd like it to go long and I'll place my stops at 264, risking 75 cents on the trade. And I'd like to trade this higher up. So that is my idea for Facebook and Facebook is going to be an A-list stock for me. Another name that is going to be on my A-list is uh, Baba. So Baba reported earnings and it sold off, it recovered, now it's in green territory. So clearly investors are still trying to digest the earnings report and how to, you know, uh, value the stock after the earnings and, and the guidance that they've provided and all the information. So um, Baba's going to be in play today. There's going to be a lot of volatility with Baba. I like that because that gives us opportunity to make some really nice money on Baba. So uh the way that i see it is this if baba trades higher than 266 definitely going long baba put my stops at like 265 right you're risking a dollar on on alibaba on the upside if alibaba sells off if it breaks this pre-market low of 261 area you can look to go short put your stops at like 262 so that's another dollar risk if it breaks the, the lower end and if it rallies on the upper end. So each idea is a dollar risk per share. For every 100 shares, you're risking 100 bucks. If you take contracts, depending on, uh, you know, obviously the expiration date and the contracts that you purchase, you may risk, you know, 50 to $100 per contract. So um, I just share that just so you guys can get an idea of the risk reward ratios that we're talking about here. Another name that I really like is INO. We played INO yesterday, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. There were so many names that we played yesterday. I, I, I lose count by the next day. <laughs> um, 
on average, I take about 15 trades a day. So, you know, I lose count. Um, INO is gapping up. It's it's uh, it's trading at $19 in pre-market. It's holding itself really nicely here. It actually just kind of broke this flag just slightly just now. Um, but it's in play. I mean, it closed yesterday at 17, uh, 1696, gapped up all the way to uh, 1975. So I like the, the range and the volatility that this stock has. So it's definitely gonna be in play for me today. Uh, it's selling off right now. So the way I see it is this, if it can reclaim 19 bucks, then I'll get excited about potentially taking a trade on, on INO. If it sells off, I mean, we have to kind of wait for like a bear flag setup or, you know, some a better setup than this. I can't just short it right out of the gates. So INO is definitely going to be a play and I'm, and I'm watching it very closely. DraftKings. Hey, for everyone swinging DraftKings, based on my uh, call a couple days ago, congrats. Feel free to take profit if you want or keep riding it up. On the daily chart, it looks really good. Uh, we broke out of that cons consolidation. $58 was the target. We're above that right now. Honestly, there is no no uh, further resistance until you know the $60 range, and then you're looking at the $62 range, and then all-time highs at around the $64 range. So I like DraftKings for the long run. Kathy Woods, uh, a very famous Wall Street investor, bought into DraftKings. She bought a ton of shares, thousands, hundreds of thousands of shares, if I'm not mistaken. So this stock is um, getting bought up by institutional investors. And I do think fundamentally in the long term, Penn Gaming and DraftKings are in a really damn good position. I personally like DraftKings a little bit more simply because Michael Jordan is an investor in this company. And ask yourself, would you put your money with Michael Jordan? I sure, I sure as hell would. So why not? Let's just ride it up with Michael Jordan. All right, so <laughs> that gives me that gives me a little bit of confidence, right, in the in the stock and and the long term prospects of the company. So that's why I like DraftKings more than than Penn Gaming. But anyways, uh, I think uh, with this gap up, there's also some day trading opportunities with it. So if DraftKings breaks above fifty eight seventy six, I like it for a long. Put your stops at fifty eight thirty. You're talking about a forty five cent risk on the trade. If DraftKings sells off. And breaks below fifty-eight dollars. Uh, first target is uh, honestly like fifty-seven pre-market low. If it breaks fifty-seven dollars, then I'm gonna look for support at the two hundred-day moving average on the five-minute time frame, and that's sitting at about fifty-six dollars and twelve cents. So there's my long idea. There's my short idea. Another name uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on very closely is Fubo. Fubo is a is a stock that. Had a nice run on it. I also called to swing Fubo uh, a couple days ago on it. So if anybody's still holding it, congrats. I personally took my profit on Fubo yesterday. Uh, so I think it has more room. But, you know, from a day trade perspective, the way I see it is this. If it could break above 52.28, go long the stock. Put your stops at, you know, you can put it at 52 or you can even, you know, give it a little bit more room. 51.50. So you're talking about a 78 cent risk on the trade for potential room to the upside. I would say my target would be 53.11 and then I'm looking at 54 as the next target. So I like Fubo a lot. If Fubo decides to sell off, watch the $51 mark. If it breaks the $51 mark, then watch the 200 day moving average on the five minute time frame, which is 50.52. If it breaks that, then you probably see $49 on the stock. So there's my long idea. There's my short idea. Uh, some other names, Virgin Galactic, uh, THCB, Ford, uh, AMC, BBBY, Tilray, and uh, WKHS. Those are B-list names, but I don't have enough time to go through them because I got to let my boy... Taj go through his a list. So my man, tell us what your stocks are. I will end, you know, speak. Well, begin with uh, a couple names that that you mentioned. Uh, one is Tilray. So Tilray 
a few weeks ago was one of the you know stocks we were pretty, trading pretty actively, right? As it was breaking out above that twelve thirteen dollar price range. Um, so I do like it today. It's moved up to about uh, twenty dollars and twenty two cents. We did have some double topping action happen, um, and now we're, we're we're seeing a pullback play back play out now. Um, however, the gap is still holding. The closing price yesterday was nineteen ten. We're at nineteen seventy five. Uh, so the way I see it, if Tilray can reclaim the highs, I would look to find a long position. Um, I, I wouldn't take it long right out of the gates from 2022 and throw stops in 1975. I think that is uh, the risk is a little too much to take that initial trade. However, um, I just like Alex said, it will be something on the B list. But nonetheless, if it starts getting some momentum, keep a close eye on it. Tilray is bull flagging up here, so if you can get some momentum. I mean, we could see Tilray, you know, retest that 2261. I believe the RSI has been, um, has calmed down a bit. Yeah, it's at 69.58 uh, from yesterday's close. So for Tilray, that means it's not too overly, overly bought. Although RSI at 70 is overbought, but hey, for Tilray, it's, it's <laughs> nothing. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, another name that Alex went over a little bit was uh, Virgin Galactic Space. I actually really like Space. The only thing I don't like about it, the only thing that I don't like about it is that it did trade up to 62.90 and it's pulled back quite a bit. It's pulled back five points. Uh, however, it has broken out into all-time highs. It's still um, hovering near the all-time high, which was 59.43. Um, the volume looks solid. You know, you're still doing about close to 100,000 shares on these candlesticks. Um, so the way I see it, there's a lot of support here uh, around $56. If it starts to break out above 58, you can play it long. Better stops around $57, $57 and see if it can retest uh, about the $60 price range. And then once it clears 60, uh, there's really no resistance until that high, that high of 62.90. Um, so I'll be keeping a close eye on that to see if it can, uh, if it can have some momentum out of the gates. Yep. Um, another name that I liked was, where are you? Apple. So, uh, as we know over the past, what, last week, market did take, uh, quite a big bit of a dip. Um, all the tech names specifically, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, well, Microsoft, not so much, but, uh, Apple and Facebook for sure have been beaten up, uh, quite a bit, but now you're starting to see some support come in, uh, come mm -hmm. into play. Um, specifically right off the 20 MA on the daily chart, you see Apple starting to bounce off of it. Uh, and now we're getting some follow through off of that bounce. We're getting a nice gap up. Apple closed yesterday at 134. We're right near 136 and Apple is actually bull flagging up here. Uh, so the way I like it, it can break out above around 136.30. You can throw your stops right here around 135.80 and see if you can play that momentum uh, to the upside. Let's see, I don't really see any resistance until around 136.74. Then after that, you're going to be flirting with the 8 of May, which is around, what, 138? 28. 130, yeah, 138.28. So uh, it, has some, it has some range in it, it has some room in it, as long as it can break out. Um, so, you know, you know me, Apple's one of my favorite names to trade, so I'll, I'll be keeping a close eye on it. Yep. Um, another name that I want to keep an eye on is Neo. It was looking great earlier. Uh, it's had a, a bit of a sell-off here. Um, it was looking pretty bullish earlier. But the main reason I want to watch NEO is because, it, look at NEO. It's just been uh, consolidating here. Mm, yeah. and now you're getting some tail action. Every time it dips down here to 55, bottom me tail. Yep. Bottom me tail. So what does that tell me? There's a lot of support here. A lot of support. So if NEO can start breaking out, um, I think we could start to get that bounce off of the moving average. You're starting to see the moving averages squeeze together yep. and price range start to get cracked. So I think you're going to have an expansion somewhere, right? So I just want to keep an eye on Neo, Neo to see if the breakdown or breakout is going to happen. So it's definitely going to be a stock that's on my B list. However, keep a close eye on it because if Neo can either break to the upside or the downside, I think it could be a big, a big move. Um, so just keep that in mind. Right now, I just want to watch for the high and lows of the day. Yesterday's high was 59.12, the low was 54.37. Um, so for me personally, I would want to see it break out above those levels, break out 
uh, either the low or the high in order to get me excited about it. I just saw something came in about Uber. Yep, Uber's popping off right now. Uh, so Uber agrees to buy alcohol delivery service uh, Drizzly for one point one billion. So alcohol Uber's getting, delivery service, uh, nice. Alcohol delivery service, yeah. Okay. So um, Uber is Uber's getting a lot of price action right now. Yeah, it um, is. Range. So we're getting we're getting some bullish uh, a bull flag form here. The range is a little wide. I mean, the high of this is what fifty six seventy. Um, if you want to be more aggressive, you can play it long around 56, 30 stops around 54.50. And let's see what happens. I mean, there's there's some volume coming through on this. 290 shares, 100 shares, 100,000 shares, 100,000 pairs here again. Uh, so this is something that just popped off on the radar. So let me add, go ahead and add it to the watch list. Yeah. Uh, so keep an eye on Uber here. If this news is, I'm not sure how relevant this news is yet. Uh, but hey, as day traders, we'll just take advantage of the of the volatility. So um, I'll be, also be keeping an eye on that. Another name is BNGO. This is a bio uh, bio company. Um, so they announced a publication of a study that measured DNA methylation, mm. and yeah. you can kind of read the story yourself. But look at the chart. You're having this thing is trading. Heavy right now, million shares, eight hundred thousand shares, five hundred thousand shares, six hundred thousand shares. Every five minute candlestick, heavily, heavily traded. It's gapping up right near its all time highs, which is thirteen eighty five. Uh, the current high is thirteen thirty, and you're getting some nice bull flag action happen here. Uh, so the way I see it, um, I'll play it long if it breaks out above thirteen dollars. I'll throw my stops around twelve forty, and see if this can fly. Um, the main reason I like it is because it has a it has a catalyst with news, uh, with the uh, the announcement that just happened. It's also a former runner. If you look back here, it was a it was once a penny stop. Um, mm. Then you start mm. getting some big volume pops. I mean, look how many shares were traded: five hundred million, six hundred million, eight hundred. Right? This stock is is really moving. Um, so. This, this could also uh, get some of the Wall Street Bets guys uh, excited. So, you know, maybe they're hopping in on this as well. So Yeah, it's a cheap uh, name, yeah. so a lot, of, a lot of day traders will get in on it. Yep, and there are options contracts available for it. Mm. So uh, nice. you'll be able to play with options as well. So um, anyway, I like it long if it breaks out above 13. This, is, this will be on my, uh, on my A-list today. And we'll just see if we can ride the momentum. If yeah. it starts to break below 1240, you could play it, you could play it short, 30 stops at 13, or around 1280, 1290, um, and play it for a reversal. However, uh, this this has a lot of momentum. It hasn't really slowed down too much, so uh, definitely be keeping that. Level that. two looks really clean too. I mean I'm seeing sixteen dollars in the print on this. Yeah, especially if it can break out, you know. Above that high, you're getting a bounce right off of the eight of May. It's bounced multiple times off the eight of May. Yeah. Um, on this daily, on this daily chart. So, I nice. mean, this is, uh, you know, this could be a very, very nice, nice winner. So. Nice. Keep an eye on that, and then there was one more. Oh, um, I want to watch AMC as well. AMC is being heavily traded right now. Yeah. Um, a million, like every candlestick is damn near a million. <laughs> uh, shares being traded so it's been beaten up uh over the past i mean this pre-market it's lost what a good chunk of its value it closed yesterday at thirteen thirty. it's currently at 950 mm -hmm. traded as low as nine bucks it is starting to find some support here um so the way i see it it starts to break down below nine dollars you can play it short i know a lot of um the platforms have lifted restrictions off of it yeah uh I know Interactive Brokers has completely lifted all restrictions um, on all of these names. So I'm not sure what, what TD Ameritrade has done, but I'm assuming they've done the same. Um, so we can trade these names. So the way I see if AMC starts breaking out, breaking down below $9, you can pick up some puts, play it to the downside. If it does start to break above 10 um, you know, maybe it's a relief bounce. There's yep. a possibility of that. These firm, if, they, if a lot of these firms or brokerages start um, clearing the trades to follow through and stop placing limitations on some of the buying that's going on. Hey, there's potential. 
there's potential, you know, they could come right back to it. Uh, but, you know, obviously we'll have to we'll have to see that play out. Um, but nonetheless, I do like AMC preferably to the downside, the short side. The A to May is at uh, right around $9. It's at 887 However, there's really no big support on AMC until around 650 uh, So there's plenty of room to the downside, assuming we can break that daily A to May. Uh, so this will also be a name that's on my A to B list. I'm not sure which which one specifically to put it on, but <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, somewhere somewhere squeezed in between those those two. Uh, but other than that, man, that pretty much that pretty much does it does it for me uh, yeah. as far as the lot walk goes. I think you covered a lot of the top names. We'll no, there's a lot a lot of names to to follow today. So, guys, uh, for everyone that that uh, you know that's in the live training room, like Taj and I always mention. Pick your top two, top four. Mark up your charts. Those zones that we call out, make sure that you're marking your charts as well. Because as you're monitoring the trade and the price action, once it triggers one of those zones, you know whether to go long or to go short. Um, so that's why we call those zones out because I personally watch about six stocks at the same time. but each of my charts have 10 different tabs. So I can flip to like 60 different stocks throughout the day or throughout, you know, 30 minutes. But I'm, you know, if in case we miss calling out, hey, go short here or go long here, that's why through this pre-market analysis, we encourage you guys to mark up your charts and to write down those entry points so that once you see it, with no hesitation, you go and get it, right? You don't wait for us to call it out you know what to do, right? Just manage yourself appropriately, you know, with your risk and your sizing of your position and you should be good to go, right? Yep, absolutely. So, well, with that being said then, for everyone on YouTube, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys tomorrow.